All right, guys, Red here. Today we're going to be going over the Inside Star Citizen Q3 follow-up for summer 22. With 3.18 just around the corner, hopefully landing in early November, Jared and the team put out a video that was a little follow-up to segments that they had done previously. So, quite a lot to cover, let's just get started. To start off with, Will Hain gave us a little update on the RiverTech system. It's looking like the River Tech has had some very significant visual upgrades. Since the last time we've seen him, he showed us footage of new cliff spawn points, and he's had some very nice rocky cliff meshes built into them. Basically, it gives rivers, or at least parts of the rivers, this nice gorge effect, where there's cliffs on one side or both sides, and it makes it into a nice, more interesting little ravine area. And this has also been expanded right down to the river bank as well, so that the rocks can come right up to the water, breaking up its edges and making it look more natural and realistic. He also went on to say that they've added more river splines for the banks as well, and this would give them greater control about the, the angle that the terrain enters the water and would stop the textures and stuff from pinching as they went round the bends. It's looking like the guys have been adding a lot of new natural objects for running down the river course and the sides of the river course. Essentially just making things more interesting and bringing everything to life and making it look bedded in, if that makes sense. No pun intended. Next up was an update on the PTV racetrack. Basically, we had Stefan Dumrao, hopefully I've said that right, on the screen, and it's been mostly bug fixing since the last update. There was a lot of collision issues getting flagged by the testers, and they were finding that they were able to get off the track and start causing all sorts of bother. So really just fencing everything in. They also said that they had removed a few shortcuts that they had discovered as well, so it's looking like all round there's some nice final polish going on that track, which is nice. Can't complain about that, that sounds great, I'm looking forward to it a lot. He also mentioned that buggies themselves aren't brought in by the player, which a lot of us probably expected. He said there's a side section of the track for buggies to spawn in, and you can take them from there to the starting line. And if they're destroyed, then they respawn in that section again, and you can just go back and get another one and take it to the line. And that's all for that. Next up, it was Korea. It looks like there's a lot of visual work being done on Korea, bringing it more in line with the newer areas of the game. Stuff like branding on the objects and environment, etc. But also how the space can be orientated by players, and the ways it will be possible to move through the station. Elliot Maltby also confirmed that Crime Stats 1 and 2 will no longer get you shot or prevent you from landing, so you should be able to just clear them at a normal terminal. The local law enforcement will comment on any crime stats that you've got, but it'll probably just be something like you need to go and get that fine paid. You will actually be able to surrender at a kiosk now, and if you do, you will receive a 20% discount on the time served, which is nice, I guess. That's nice, right? More iteration to come if necessary. So if things aren't finalised, they may have to tweak some things and do some jiggery-pokery before we're all happy, no doubt. In Kletcher itself, a new mission giver will be there, and that's been confirmed to be Ruto. The mission itself is up and running, and they've added new routes in the walls that will make escaping harder and more dangerous. You will now need to break away from the normal paths that would let you escape, and reconnect to it further down the line with pitfalls along the way, possibly leading to your death. AI has been added as well to make the place feel more alive, and they also have loot on them. He mentioned a black spot, I think this refers to an area where contact with the outside world will still be possible. So all in all, it's looking like Clesher's going to be a lot more interesting. Sand caves were quickly mentioned. Uh, they've had some polish, but they seem happy with them and they're ready to roll out. Good, good, good. Next up, we had Nemanja Panic talking about the Daymar crash sites. Since last he was on, they've had a good polish and a debug. Also some tweaking to make missions harder. Apparently they realised after a playtest that things were too easy, so they've went in there and made things a little bit more exciting. 
the LODs and AI have had another look where necessary and he seemed to be quite happy with where that was currently. Also a better navigation pass has been done for player and AI. Three missions will be available, a kill all mission, a mission to kill a specific person and a retrieve box for delivery mission will also be available. The AI is looking to be changed at some point to sand nomads, but he did say that that might not make it in for this patch. Siege Islands Something they forgot to speak about last time was that when the Siege of Orison isn't active, there will now be some missions taking place on the islands that are normally reserved for that event. It's looking like to start with it will just be lots of killing things or taking out high value targets, but it was mentioned that these were just a prototype currently and it would possibly be something better and more specific or tailored later down the road. Next up was Thorsten Lehman and he was talking about hull scraping. Basically he was saying that there's no real difference between a reclaimer and the vulture when it comes to hull scraping other than the cargo capacity. Whether this means that the lasers they use will be identical in every way I'm not so sure. I was kind of hoping that something the size of the reclaimer would be able to scrape faster and have a bigger, fatter laser, if I'm being honest, but I wasn't sure if he meant specifically just the gameplay or the actual tools themselves would be identical. Either way, this will obviously change when ship munching comes into the game. It was also mentioned that the hull scraper can be used in an offensive capacity, but this would only work if enemy shields were down. He also pointed out that the repairs provided by the hull scraping and then replacing mechanic would be limited in the sense that if you lost a wing, for example, that wing would be lost. So basically, it covers holes in your hull. It can't replace engine parts or, you know, thrusters and the like. But it does increase the ship's health, though, to within a certain amount. So I'm guessing that means you won't ever get all the way back up to full health, but you can patch yourself enough to be getting on with, if that makes sense. Well, the last thing he mentioned was that derelict ships will now have a chance to spawn in the asteroid belts. These will be spawned in fresh and ready to be scraped. You'll be able to scan for them and do some salvaging business. Good, good. Can't wait, can't wait. And that's it. That's all we got from the latest Inside Star Citizen. That was a decent little chunk of information. Hopefully that will give us something to chew on until 3.18 arrives. That's all for me, though. Remember, like and subscribe. Oh, seven guys.